On November 30th of 2022, the world changed forever. Artificial intelligence or AI became accessible to the public for free through a tool called ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. A robot you can talk to. That you can log on to and have a conversation with. And it went from zero to a million users in five days, which is the fastest any platform has gotten to a million users. It took Facebook two years, it took Instagram two years, it took Pinterest four months, and it took Angry Birds 35 days. I think that it has the potential to unravel the very fabric of capitalism itself and what it means for us as individuals. And a little bit later in the video, I'm gonna tell you how you can capitalize on this to 10X how much you make rather than being afraid of it in the short term and curling up in a ball and putting your head in the sand and like hoping it goes away. It's here and it's only gonna get more dangerous and powerful. So there's five major areas that I think it's going to completely turn on its head. Number one is the nature of work itself. The second is how businesses operate. The third is the economy overall. The fourth is how we interrelate with one another on a romantic setting how we choose mates, how we seduce, how we have sex, all of that stuff. And finally, the nature of life itself and how it actually extends to interplanetary life and whether or not aliens exist here on Earth. I'm not a big woo-woo tin hat guy, but I think if you actually think through the logic, there's some really alarming conclusions that you can come to. AI is gonna be the biggest shift in our lifetime. It is the equivalent, in my opinion, of the moon landing, except the only difference is that it will actually change all of our lives rather than just being a picture to say that we won the Cold War. Different than the internet, phone systems, television, because what those did was they reshuffled the workforce. This has the ability to remove or eliminate the workforce altogether. Cryptocurrencies in general had the potential to overturn the financial institution. AI is the potential to overturn the human institution. I try to convince people to slow down Slow down AI, to regulate AI. I tried for years. If you don't know who I am or you're new to the channel, my name is Alex Ramosi. I'm the founder of Acquisition.com. We're a portfolio of companies that does over $200 million a year, and I make these videos so that you can use them and make lots and lots of money, and hopefully you become a company between three and $100 million, and we can invest in your business and help you scale beyond that. So in order for us to productively talk about AI, to understand what the terms we're actually talking about are. AI is a type of technology that helps machines or computers do things that normally need a human brain to do. Stuff like learning, solving problems, making decisions, and understanding what we see or hear. The thing that made the release on November 30th is so wild is that ChatGPT democratized access to AI for the first time because it had an interface that we could all use, chat. They created a massive language model that allowed it to understand our prompts and queries and be able to translate that into machine speak, get the answer, and then retranslate it back to us in human speak. That is what made it so powerful because now all of us can use it. Right now, ChatGPT spits out words, sentences, paragraphs, articles, and even entire books. It can write legal documents, it can write sales scripts, it can write video scripts. The list is literally endless. I asked it the other day to write a cold email to a plumbing company for marketing SEO services, and it spit it out. And then I said, cool, make it funnier and shorter. Spit out another version. And I said, great, turn it into a text message. Did it. Turn it into a tweet storm. Did it. It's difficult to comprehend the extent of it because it's only really limited by our ability to ask the right questions, which I'll get to later because it's gonna be very important in terms of how you choose to use AI. That's just words as the output, but we understand other things. We can interpret images, we can interpret videos, and we can interpret sounds. And the crazy thing is, is that AI can do that too. So OpenAI also runs DALI, which is an image engine generator. And so if I said, hey, give me a guy smoking a cigar, looking over a beach, where there's a dragon. Now, make it in Van Gogh painting style. Crazy. Now make me 10 versions of that. Now, if you think about the nature of what a video is, back in the day, it was used to be a flip book. They would take images and they would flip the pictures and then you'd have a video because we can't tell the difference at past a certain speed. And so if it can make images, then if it makes lots of images in a row, it can make videos. But on top of that, if it has the words and it can make the video, it can also make the sounds. In the very near future, those will merge. And at the same degree, the inputs being text or verbal will also merge. This is the reason Elon Musk has been such a big proponent of Neuralink. He wants to take it a factor further rather than be limited by our ability to speak or our ability to type, he wants it to be limited by our ability to think. Now that may sound like science fiction, but it's already here. Many of us were alive during the first iPhone launch. Now we're on iPhone 14 or 15 or whatever it's on now. What we see today is our first version that we can see. ChatGPT 100 is gonna be significantly more advanced and we'll be able to input and output on demand any of these things the way we want them. The next important milestone is when AI actually enters the physical world. Elon revealed the Tesla bot. The thing is, is that that's what it is today. 
Again, like the iPhone, in many machine generations, which happen faster than human generations, that will be able to look exactly like a human. And it will definitely, if you look at Boston Dynamics, there's robots that actually function better than humans, that have longer arms and are much stronger and can jump and don't need to sleep and won't have sexual complaints, blah, 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 blah. Once those machine generations happen on robotics and on the AI side, we'll reach a point where there's super intelligence. And super intelligence is defined as where the AI itself is smarter than all humans put together. I think it takes like unique human arrogance to believe that uh, AI cannot supersede humans. At that point, the world will change significantly. This is where access to the superintelligence will become the most valuable resource on planet Earth. For example, if I were to say, hey, build me a trillion dollar company, it could in real time write the code for the product, write the scripts for the ads, generate the videos for the ads, directly interface with the media buying, place the ads where it already knows where the targeted audience is, push those targeted audience's eyes to landing pages that it had built with scripts and videos that it had built, and then transact, all from a single prompt. Who determines who gets the access will be a really important question for the future. The second is what will govern the types of prompts and queries that we can ask it. So if we said, how do I wipe out the entire human race for less than $100,000? We don't want it really answering questions like that. There's gonna to have to be some regulation around this because the thing is, that's a lot of power. If we had a thousand times the rate of innovation, it would be the same as having all innovations between the period of enlightenment and today happen next year. And so that gives way to the last step in the AI evolution, which is the singularity. The singularity is a hypothetical future point in which technological progress and artificial intelligence will advance to the point where humanity will undergo a transformation beyond which it cannot be seen. The first truly intelligent machine will be the last invention that humanity needs to make. Many people postulate that that's the point where it will become either self-aware, it will start to make its own decisions and ignore us. Well, it won't really want to kill us because it has no reason to, for the same reason that we don't want to kill ants, but if we build a highway, we destroy some anthills. So it's just gonna do what it's gonna do. Some robots will eat some jobs and some robots will kill humans. You've already seen that with self-driving cars. But when you look at the trend as a whole, I think it's gonna be incredibly positive for humanity. This is why Elon and Sam Altman and those guys are trying to align our goals of humanity with the goals of the AI. It's the only really productive thought process we can have because we can sit here and be afraid, but I don't think we're gonna stop the technological progress. Even if they banned it, knowing how the internet is and knowing how black hat coders, et cetera, are, I have a hard time believing that they will be able to stop it because the thing is, this will be the equivalent of having the new nuclear bomb of this century or this millennia. If humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, then we should do so very, very carefully. This is the most important thing that we could possibly do. That's all pie in the sky stuff. Let's talk about day to day, let's talk about business. So to frame this conversation, I think you have to watch this clip because it will make everything I'm about to say make sense. So this is from Google, and this is from four years ago, their personal assistant AI, and they haven't released this to the public, which is weird. So how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. First name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. That's the baseline. That was four years ago. Now imagine it was a sales call and we have sales AI that's listened to 10 million sales calls. This is the types of things that these people say in these situations, I will say the same thing. And then it iterates and learns over and over again. The AI can live a million lifetimes in terms of the amount of volume it can churn through and process and learn from compared to a human. So the best sales guy is gonna have this much experience compared to the best AI sales guy. And so if it can have those calls 24 hours a day in real time to whatever prospect you want, you may even imagine a world where you ask the phone teller, hey, are you a human? And when they say, no, I'm AI, you're relieved because you're like, thank God, I'm talking to the best version of this who can handle my problem right now. So if you were to have asked people, what job do you think AI will replace first? Most people said, first it'll replace the low-skilled jobs, the physical labor, and then it'll be the low-skilled white-collar jobs, and then it'll be the high-skilled white-collar jobs like programmers and coders, and then finally, maybe, it'll replace the creative jobs. But what's interesting is that it actually happened in the reverse order. If you're a copywriter, 
This has serious implications for you. A logo designer. This has serious implications for you. Customer service. 24 hours a day, in real time, immediate feedback. What happens to all the physicians? It becomes immediate and more accurate for us to have access to a medical AI from our homes. And it can see us because it can interpret the data visually too. If you're in finance, it will be able to take all of the raw data and realign it and put it into beautiful Excel sheets. A friend of mine has a father who's a medical malpractice attorney. He asked it to write an argument for why malpractice should not be capped in terms of how much a lawyer can make on a malpractice to suit and then it outlined an entire argument for why it should be uncapped. It happened to be almost identical to the argument that he had after 40 years of experience. You see videos like this, you see all these people on YouTube, you see Instagram posts. Well, what if the AI reads every single Instagram post of all time and ranks them by highest performing and then merge that with video and deepfakes, we will have pundits and influencers that don't exist. Imagine you could create the perfect celebrity or the perfect spokesperson or the perfect porn star. And with deep fakes, they can work 24 hours a day, say exactly what you want, and what they say has the perfect tone and made to just stimulate the shit out of our dopamine centers. And we're just gonna be plugged in because it knows what we like better than we do. If you don't believe me, go to thispersondoesnotexist.com and just keep refreshing it and it will show you new people. Now, if you remember earlier, a video is made of multiple images put together back to back to back. If it can make an image of a real person, it can make many images of real people. If it can make many images of real people, it can make a video of a real person. And then we'll have questions of verification. Did President Biden say that? Did President Trump say that? Or is it a deep fake? The blue check mark will take on an entirely new meaning in the very near future. Now those are just a few, few use cases, but anywhere humans are, it will disrupt. If you are connected to the AI, you can input faster and you can get information back faster because you're not limited by your digits. This will be the next order of magnitude in terms of output and value that individuals will be able to create in the economy. I do think that there's a chance that capitalism as a system for society may be overturned. You're gonna have a huge cost basis that's gonna be eliminated. So things may get cheaper. But at the same time, the money that would have gone to those people that's gonna go to the economy won't be there. The point is, is that I think there will be significant changes to capitalism overall. Now, one of the nice things, Sam Altman, who's the CEO, they have actually been undergoing the largest UBI study, so Universal Basic Income Study, as a result concurrently with this technology. So he knows what they're making. We're, we're gonna have an opportunity to push the reset button and think about the world we want. And I think universal basic income is one part of that. He knows the impact of what's going to have. Now in the short term, we'll be able to harness this. And this is what I think will foster in, at least in the short term, a golden age for humanity in terms of what we're going to be able to accomplish scientifically. I believe that we will be able to achieve nuclear fusion. Fusion is renewable, clean energy for everyone. When you reconstruct the energy infrastructure upon which all of society is laid upon, it changes everything. And so in a very real way, this will be a more significant change or revolution in humanity, in my opinion, than the Industrial Revolution, which changed everything. But let's talk about a very different topic. Let's talk about romance. This is where, in my opinion, it gets a little bit scary. The bottom tier of society have a harder time getting mates, girls or guys. Imagine if we've studied a million Tinder conversations to get the first date. There'll be tools, probably called first date AI, that can AI from first convo all the way to the date getting set. So let's take it a step further. We have the phone version of this, and you can hear a voice that has been tuned to your preferences of the exact type of voice that you want to hear that talks to you and listens to you like the kind heart that they are and they don't care that you talk too much and you only talk about yourself. And when you say these weird things, they just let it go. Because we think we're more complicated than you are, but we really just have inputs that our brain interprets from an electrical signal and then assigns meaning to. And once you know the inputs, you just hit the buttons. And that's what it will learn how to do. Now we fall in love with robots. Take it a step further. The Tesla bot, five generations, 10 generations from now, looks like a human and now has that in the brain. What happens when the robot humans are more attractive, more loving, more caring, more considerate, and cheaper than a spouse? Before I explain how you can maximally use this to make the most money and live the best life in the short term based on the skills that we have today, indulge me for one more moment because I think it's really profound and I think it's gonna change the way you see the world. Let's talk about aliens. Oh, pull it up, Jamie. Joe Rogan and many people have talked about alien technology and like what if there was a UFO that was captured, all that kind of stuff. So let's put a pin in that, play this out with me. When humans want to explore the universe, what do we send first? We send Mars rover, we send a robot, right? Right, if aliens, are further ahead of us, then it means that they probably have AI. If they're gonna send something, they would probably send a robot. Why? Because a robot doesn't need to eat, it can live for a very long time, and it can survive in harsher, different climates than biology can. On top of that, it can work on itself. 
whereas biology cannot. So aliens might be here, but not necessarily in their physical form, but in their AI form. Because if we can create robots that perfectly clone humans, so can they. And that may be who they sent, or what they sent, to check out what we're doing. AI would be the perfect thing to send to another planet because up to this point, when we send something, it takes five years for it to reach whatever planet it's on. And so by the time it's there, it's really old technology. And so it makes sense that you'd want to send something that is completely adaptable and can rewrite its own code. Space exploration may be done by AI more than it is done by humans because this stuff, our flesh, we're super easy to kill. But the AI can live super cold, super hot, no oxygen, lots of oxygen, it's good. And once we solve fusion with it, it won't even need the sun. Which leads to one question about life itself. If we define death as the inability to receive inputs, so like when you die, you can't receive inputs anymore. And we define personality as the conglomerate of our actions and behaviors as a result of our past experiences. Then if I were to upload my thoughts and behaviors and past experiences, how I talk, how I speak, how I think, etc., into a cloud drive, and then it were able to pass the Turing test, everybody I know couldn't tell whether it was me or a robot version of me, then is it me? And if that thing can now go travel planets is it humans that are traveling to planets? Or is it an AI cyborg version of humans? I don't know, interesting questions. And you're like, okay, Alex, you took me to romance robot wives and aliens, how do I make more money today? So the first thing that I would ask is that you adopt the mentality that AI isn't here to replace me, it's here to supercharge me. Why do I say that? Because if you adopt the other one, you might as well just throw in the towel now. You have to embrace change. It's part of humanity, technology moves, we gotta adapt. If AI can condense our inputs, so if I say, hey, go read this book, distill it down and then give it to me, I can now read a book significantly faster. If I say, hey, AI, go summarize all my email and all my Slack messages and predict what I'm going to say, and then all I need to do is validate it, I can do a day's worth of work in a few minutes. I think of ChatGPT and AI of the future as a filter through which we will perceive the world both in and out. Think of it as your home screen. You read everything through AI because it has already distilled it down to the most important nuggets for you. Then in the output side, it makes predictions on what you would say normally and it continues to get training it better and then it sends it. We can consume 10 times the information and produce 10 times the output, which is a 100x increase. So that's level one. The next level, is the expert level. And these are the people who are losing sleep over being like, oh my God, this thing can now do my job. If you're an expert, what used to take you 90% of your time, which is generating things, you now expand most of your time to using the machine to generate, and then you spend your time doing QA and validating the information, making tweaks. And so in a very real way, using these tools, you become more valuable to the companies that you work for or the clients that you serve. I'll leave you with this. This video was made entirely by AI and this is a deep fake. I'm just kidding, but someday it might be.